Hey, what's up guys? So I am really excited. Um, I just got paid for my first gig yesterday and it was basically a two minute video explaining how a new product works and I'm very excited. Um, it, it was a lot of money too, which I was, that's what really shocked, you know, kind of shocked my eyes. Like, you know, it was like, wow, that much just for all this. And I, I realized, you know, the, the rate that I can go as to being a 2D animated slash uh, cinema 4D uh, artist, but it was just kind of crazy that, you know, I my first paid gig so like i said really got me excited uh you know regarding the you know just the design industry overall so anyway this video is really for experimenting with uh a feature in cinema 40 that i really haven't touched or i have touched but it would be basically something that i would look up a video basically on how to do and i just thought maybe I could tackle this on my own. I don't need a video to help me out with this. But like I said, this is just for experimenting. I'm just trying to see what I could do with it. And this was definitely inspired from Nick Campbell and uh, Beeple's uh, interview where Beeple talked about his everyday renders and how even some of the things that I haven't touched yet, you know, he he, he definitely hasn't touched yet either. Like espresso, modeling, sculpting, like he hasn't touched any of that stuff. And for the most part, he just throws in textures, which is kind of crazy because that's what that's kind of what I do. But I do a little experimenting if I can. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's let's go ahead and just see what I can do with this. I'm gonna click on the sphere and maybe I'm gonna increase this radius to 125. And for segments, I'm gonna put this to 72 so it's nice and spherical. And just for the sake of this, I'm gonna throw in uh, Arnold for this. So real quick, I'm just gonna put in Arnold render. Let me just let me just see what I can do. So anyway, uh, with that, I'm gonna add the hair, and you can see it already adds in the hair to the sphere. And when if you don't know what this hair is actually, by the way, you can go to simulate hair objects, add hair, and just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna add in this uh, bar. Go in the hair tools and then click on this bar. I'm gonna move this over to my object tab or next to it. So you know I always have this ready to go to kind of play around with it. So before I even play around with the tools, I'm going to first check out my guides and hairs. I'm going to move the segments to about 20 if I can remember. That actually does have a difference as to your rendering and how the hair will look, as well as your count. So I'm going to move this up to about 100,000. Let me just see. Is that 100? Yeah, it's 100,000. As long as it's not a million. I don't think my I don't think this desktop can, can handle a million, honestly. So anyway, um, yeah, let me see what I can do with this nice tool brushing and and stuff. So, uh, this options look good. Strength, radius, the circle shape. All right, let me go ahead and just see. This is actually kind of it's it's weird, but it's actually kind of fun at the same time. And I don't know what I'm doing, so just bear with me on this, guys. Um. Let me just see. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Let me just move this downward and let me move this over. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Wow. Um, let's keep that going downward because that did not look good. I mean, it's making the, the, br the hair look better as the brushing it, but still, and I didn't mean to do that. All right, there you go. There, now, we're, now we're getting some hair in. Um, let me check. Oh wait, I forgot about this side. All right. Um, I think that would. Oh wait, let me do a little bit more. You can see it's. I, I kind of I'm aiming at this downward hair kind of. Uh look so anyway yeah that, that's looking good so let me go to the comb actually and if I can remember if you hit apply it will actually do something crazy with it but you can uh, definitely you know fix it with this curve graph thing you can kind of move it and kind of no I don't I don't want that kind of like how this is going I kind of like the direction it's aiming towards oh that's actually pretty nice I like all this nice clumped up hair kind of scattering so not scattering but kind of um intersecting and kind of tangled up together so 
Anyway, um, let me go ahead and play around with the hair materials. Actually, before I do that, um, what I want to do is create a camera. I'm going to jump into the camera. I'm going to create a portrait. I'm going to kind of zoom in on here. And let me get out the camera real quick. Let me change this to camera my IPR so it's always looking at the camera no matter what. Zoom out. Um, I'm going to create two quad lights. And that's just by going to Arnold Light and then Quad Light. And one useful tip actually is right clicking on the light that you're going to use. Cinema 4D, no, so, sorry, I am, I apologize for that. Cinema 4D tags and then target. And then if you throw in your sphere, wrong one. If you throw in your sphere into your target object, um, the light will always be aiming at the sphere no matter what, which is what I love about it. So I can move this upward. It's always going to be pointing at it. And uh, to some extent, I think it's an underrated uh, kind of tool because I don't see a lot of people use it, but it's it's still there. You know, I'm pretty sure people know about this, unlike me, you know, who just found out about this not too long ago. So uh, let me go ahead and get a nice light there. I'm gonna increase the lighting just just a little bit. I'm gonna increase my samples. Uh, I'm gonna make this a pinkish like uh, light. And then I'm going to duplicate this. Just kind of move this over. I'm gonna move this closer actually. And let me increase the intensity a little bit, change this to about a nice reddish. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now I can turn on my IPR and it will render it out based on what I have right now. But um, the hair right now is just kind of generic, I should say. So I'm gonna go into the material editor and I'm going to First, change this. I don't think the color really makes a difference in all honesty because the fact that it's an Arnold, it's not, I'm not using a standard material. So I'm actually going to just create that. Just something random. I'm going to do something blue because blue is my favorite color. You know, blue is the best color. But anyway, um, I'm going to turn on my frizz and kind of lower this percentage down to about, about 7%. Nah, eight is good. And one thing I noticed actually with the material editor or hair in general, when it comes to using like an IPR or an, uh, like a interactive preview render in general, um, it usually affects its real time render only because you're kind of alternating this real time and it's kind of updating real time at the, you know, at the same time. So it's, it could be a little uh, slow for your computer at times. So for the kink, let me put this to about 10%. So I know it's there overall. I'm gonna turn on clump, but I'm not gonna really mess with it much. I usually just turn it on so the hair, some hairs will clump up together and some hairs won't. Um, if I remember displace, I don't know about Titan, but if I remember displace, um, you can move the roots and the tips based on the X curve, Y curve, and Z curve, as you can see. And I believe the left, uh, the beginning, or the left side, I should say, of the graph is your roots, and or at least like somewhere near the roots. And let me actually shut this off for now, just so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And for the right sides, the tips. Yeah, there you go. So let me actually move this a little closer. And for the Y curve, I kind of want this nice and kind of shriveled up if, I, if that even makes sense. And for the Z curve, let me, I, I know that's kind of like a different position or perspective. Because right now we can see this in like an X and Y view. So Z is a little, you're definitely affecting something overall. So let me turn on curl and let me just, oh wait, I don't want variation. I could actually turn that on just for the sake of, which is that 10% anyway, but or at least increase, I should say, not turn it on. Yeah, I'm going to leave this at 35. That's pretty nice. All right, now that I finished up with my, uh, you know, material editor, let me uh, just see how this looks by just clicking on the, preview render and just see how this looks. I'm hoping that this looks pretty uh, nice. Um, just for the sake of this video, or just in general, I'm not going to do a depth of field. Maybe I'll add it on at some point. I'll probably play around with it. But overall, based on this IPR, I think it's looking pretty nice, to be honest. Um, I'm going to do a 1080 render just for the thumbnail of this video. And then for my progress, I'm going to do a, uh, 
a 1080p because I've been doing it on Instagram and then it kind of gets shared to Facebook anyway. But um, I kind of been doing these 1080 or these square like compositions. I'm not sure why. I think I'm just trying to get comfortable with the idea of you know 1080. But I, I still love my 1920 by 1080. Don't get me wrong. But like I said, it's just for the sake of this. So anyway, um, turn that to 1080. Since there's no glossiness, refraction, or volume, I'm just gonna leave that at zero. And then turn on my diffuse to about four, leave my camera to about five. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my ray depth, except I'm not gonna put it that high. I'm just gonna leave it at three. I bring down my total usually to eight. Uh, glossy, zero, and the rest is gonna be zero. So anyway, that's I'm, I'm really liking how that looks. I may go into After Effects and uh, play around with something. I may add one of the Grayscale Gorilla LUTs, and I've been loving the LUTs so far. My favorite one is the everyday uh, LUTs. It's like everyday, everyday, I think it's called. But I really love how that one looks. It gives it like a nice bluish gen like general feel of it. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely going to play around with that a little bit. But anyway, I hope you guys actually uh, enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys like these kinds of videos. Um, I'm Based on this animation, actually, I'm really inspired to kind of do my own cartoon animation as to creating my own cartoon characters, rigging it, and then kind of doing something corny and sketchy. And that's I kind of want to build my own 2D reel, 2D animated reel, honestly. So um, I just keep a lookout if you if you guys are interested in, you know, how I'm going to go about the, that project. So without further ado, um, hope you guys have a good uh, Friday. So see ya.